Unfortunately, tourists and cruise travelers can be easy targets in cruise ports of call. In fact, I made a pretty classic mistake I should have known better that got me scammed when I was on my last cruise. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifeballcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, honestly, petty theft, tourist scams, these are real things that we deal with in some of the cruise ports of call. Now, it's not a reason to not travel there. I never want to do these videos and make people afraid of going to some of these cities or some of these cruise ports of call. But I'm really making this as a way sort of to let you know, and we all do need to be vigilant. There are actually some things that we actually witnessed or experienced firsthand that I did want to share with you. There were some things that I really didn't know, and I think that those things will be helpful. Now, I have five scams to share with you, including the one, possibly two, depending on how you look at it, that actually did happen to us on our cruise. Number one, the Barcelona restaurant pickpocketer. Now, we saw something that I'd never witnessed before. So we were at a restaurant in Barcelona. And by the way, in Barcelona, pickpocketing or petty theft is an actual problem that they do deal with. The tour guides let us know, even at the restaurants, they will let you know to be very vigilant. So what happened was we were at this very popular restaurant. We were sitting outdoors and in that outdoor area, well, there was a group of people and people are just waiting for tables and that kind of thing. It definitely gets very busy. Well, what we witnessed was two tables down from us. There was a gentleman and his wife, they were sitting and he put his, basically his crossbody bag or belt bag, he put that onto the chair next to him. Now, I know you're probably thinking, now that's not a good idea, but sometimes you're so close to something, you don't really think that somebody is going to steal that. Well, what happened was before he knew it, his crossbody bag was taken. Now, what I saw that I've never seen before was there was somebody who was basically an undercover security or an undercover police officer. He was dressed in plain clothes, looking like a tourist, and he actually caught up to that pickpocket. He was able to retrieve the man's crossbody bag. That man was very lucky. They, after that, went over to the police station. And thank goodness for him that it ended well because he did share that not only did he have money and credit cards in there, but he had the passports of him and his wife as well. Now, unfortunately, we hear of many stories of cruisers who have lost their passports while on excursions or during their pre-cruise stay in a city. So the best thing that you can do is leave your passports on board the ship inside your safe or inside your hotel room. Make sure obviously that you're at a safe and secure hotel location. Or if you do prefer to have them on you, then make sure that you do have a money belt that you wear under your clothing. And yes, there are times that you might need to show your passport or have your passport. So make sure that you keep copies with you and take a photo of your passports as well. Now I have another pickpocketing story that happened in a completely different way that I'm gonna share in just a moment. But I did wanna share with you another scam that we saw saw in Barcelona. Now this one is the tourist photo scam and this is really not as grave but it definitely is something to be aware of. It definitely happens. Now I saw this from a mile away but other people that were in the area that we were this was in the gothic quarter in barcelona well they didn't know what was coming basically there were two women they were sort of dressed up with white faces uh, looking i guess pretty interesting and they went up to some people that were taking pictures and they basically got in the picture with them now at first the men were sort of laughing it was fun until the ladies started to ask for money and they would not leave without being paid. Now we kept moving on, but even at the time that we were leaving, it seems like they were getting some extreme pressure to give a little bit more. Now, please let me know if you've ever seen or got caught in that photo scam before. Number three, the work in teams pickpocketing scam. Now I saw this one just recently on Facebook. I did wanna share it with you because there were a couple of lessons that we could really learn about this. So firstly, a lady explained that she was actually pickpocketed in Rome and thank goodness, I think it was her sister-in-law who saw the person as they were doing it, screamed and basically thwarted that petty theft. But basically these are the things that she noticed. She actually shared the picture on Facebook. I'm not gonna do that, but she did share something in particular to look out for. So basically these pickpockets worked in a team. There was a woman and a man that you could think are basically a husband and wife. And the way they were dressed 
was they looked like tourists. They were basically wearing khaki shorts, an oversized shirt, a hat on their head, and then the woman had a big floppy hat in her hand. And that's basically the trick. What they would do is use their hand with the hat over it to reach into somebody's purse or handbag. And of course, they oftentimes work in two so that one person does the distracting while the other person grabs the items. And when somebody has a hat, or I've seen that sometimes people have a sweatshirt that hangs over their arm, well, what it does is it really kind of conceals what they're doing. Now for ladies, if at all possible, try to wear a crossbody bag, or if you are wearing a regular handbag, make sure that it has a zipper or a tie and that you are holding it very closely, especially if you are in those big tourist sites where it does tend to get crowded. Now I have one more that I think gets a lot of us in many cruise ports of call, and then I will share the way that we were scammed that I probably should have known a little bit better. So number four is the tourist trap restaurants. And basically these are the restaurants that are in the main areas of the city, the main areas that are close to the tourist sites. So it could be the cafe that's right across Trevi Fountain, or it could be one of the restaurants along La Ramblas in Barcelona, or it could be a pizza place in Livorno. Now something that I learned after unfortunately eating some, well, not great food in some of our cruise ports of call is if you go to some of those side streets, you're really going to have oftentimes not only less expensive food, but better food. And a good tip here is try to speak to some of the local people and ask them where they would eat or for some recommendations. Now we got some really great recommendations. We went to some really good restaurants, so I am gonna share some of them with you. Now these are in particular in the Mediterranean cruise ports of call. So a really good one in Barcelona is Cerveceria Catalana. Basically tapas, really, really, really good. Another restaurant that we went to, and this was in Rome, was Tonarello. Now, I do think this is very popular with tourists. It's in the Travesteri area in Rome. They have about 60,000 reviews. They're all excellent. Now, I don't know if locals go there as much as tourists, but I think definitely for tourists, this is a place that you might want to check out. Now, after dinner, we walked around the area and we stumbled upon an amazing gelato place that is called Old Bridge Gelateria. It was so good. I had the pistachio gelato and highly recommend. Now, also in Rome, this place is a little bit different. It's called Mayo. I think I might be pronouncing it wrong, so I'm gonna spell it M-A-I-O. Now, this is a rooftop restaurant, and what happened was we were in the area not too far from the Spanish Steps, and we happened to walk into a shopping center in part because we wanted the air conditioning, this shopping center, by the way, is so interesting. There's actually a place in the basement that you can see part of old Rome. I didn't go see it, but since then I've researched it. Very, very interesting. But on the rooftop, there's an excellent restaurant and rooftop bar. Frank had a delicious ravioli. Ethan had a lemon pasta with clams. I had a burrata salad and an Aperol spritz and that gorgeous view, well, it just can't be beat. Now, also in Rome, not too far from the Pantheon, we went to a very popular restaurant. It was very good, called Alfredo alla Scorfa. Now, it definitely is a busy restaurant, but we did find the Alfredo and other foods quite tasty. Now, in the case of all of those restaurants, they were either recommendations from local people or from the Lifewell Cruise community, so thank you. The tourist attraction ticket scam. So yes, this one, really got me. I should have known better. Now what I did is I purchased online a skip the line to go into the Vatican. What I did, and this was my mistake, is I purchased it online on the same day that I wanted to go visit the Vatican. And I actually purchased it while we were in our bus ride on the way from Civita Vecchia, the cruise port, to Rome. And obviously, my head just really wasn't there. I didn't do a lot of research. I just thought, you know what, I should really book that. And I did that online. I pretty much just looked quickly at the prices. I found something that seemed reasonable, maybe even a little bit better priced than some of the other companies, and I purchased it online. Now, after I made the purchase on my credit card, I did receive a confirmation, 
I had a time to go. So I didn't really think anything more until later on in the day when we were walking on our way to the Vatican. Now our skip the line entry ticket was for five o'clock PM. Now we were on our way walking probably at about 440 when I decided to just take a look at those tickets to make sure that I had them handy for when we were going to enter into the Vatican. Well, what I realized at that point was that we could not actually download or look at the tickets right from our phone. It was that we had to do an in-person pickup. Now, when I looked at where we needed to pick up our tickets, it was located approximately 30 minutes walk from the Vatican. There was no way that we'd have enough time to go walk there and to walk back to the Vatican in time to use our tickets. Now, of course, I tried to call the contact number. I tried to email, but to no avail, nobody ever did respond. The tickets were about 45 euros each. So I was basically losing about 150 US dollars or so. Now, what we did at that point is we decided to go anyway to the Vatican. We stood in line, which in the end, honestly, took us probably about 30 minutes to get in. We were able to see it. It was just exquisite but it was a lesson for me. Of course, I should have known better than to make that booking without checking the reviews of the company that I was dealing with and without maybe checking really thoroughly into the terms and conditions because I just assumed that I would be getting my ticket emailed to me or it would be a download. Now, I know we had a bad experience and in good part, it was because I didn't do my research. So please, if you do have any recommendations of tour guides that are in Rome or in particular of how you visited the Vatican, please let me know down in the comments below because I know that it will help other people that are going. Oh, and by the way, when I did look up reviews for this company after the fact, I did find that there were many poor reviews, including many people saying that they were never able to use their tickets. Now there are some lessons that I learned and I think as cruisers we can learn. Firstly, as tourists, sometimes we let our guard down. We are on vacation, we're having fun and sometimes we're a little bit tired and that causes us maybe to not research things or not use our common sense as much as we should. Now I know that I'm not perfect, but I am gonna try to keep that in mind for the next time. Now, please let me know, have you ever been the victim of a pickpocketing or maybe have you seen anything happen or any other types of scams while in a cruise port of call? Please let me know down in the comments below. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.